to be honest, to be our truest selves without fear of rejection. It used to be that a close friend or group of friends allowed us to be our true selves. For everyone else, we gave a smile, a laugh, and, oh yes, I'm fine, how are you? However, this one small circle of trust has expanded rapidly through social media, where not being fine is fine. Why? Oscar Wilde once said, man is least himself when he talks in his own person. Give him a mask and he will tell you the truth. Now Wilde may have been referring to his attempt to hide his personal life from the outside world, but in the midst of the 21st century social media takeover, it seems as if nearly everyone has assumed a mask in the glow of a computer screen. To take on a new identity, one only needs to open up an app. So today, I want to talk to you about a different kind of honesty. The kind that takes the form of a Finstagram. According to the Urban Dictionary, a Finstagram, or Finsta for short, is a fake Instagram account where one can post ratchet pictures without fear of persecution from sororities, job society as a whole. Now, ratchet can be a confusing term, so I used one of my ratchet posts to ask my followers what it meant. For those who are wondering or not familiar with the term, answers included shady, sketchy, tacky, and half trying to achieve a standard accomplishment. Now this is in contrast to your Rinsta or real Instagram account, where you try to show yourself off to the world. Posts and saving a daily or hourly update on your thoughts are reserved for the one or two times a week when you are with friends or looking particularly pretty. You try to look popular and glamorous and perhaps a little bit better than everyone else. Pictures can take hours to edit, and captions must be clever, but also casual, so no one knows you really spend that much time trying to impress them. In contrast, both your pictures and captions on your Finsta have no filter. For example, this is something I might post about spending alone time on my Finsta. A solo pic on my Finsta features a genuine smile and unique location. Hanging out with friends on my Finsta. Hanging out with friends on my Finsta. Vacations on my Finsta, vacations on my Rinsta. Finsta, Rinsta. Get the picture? So no one really has time for filtering out what or what not to post on their Finstagram. Posts occur all too frequently. For example, I average a post and a half every day for a year and a half. If you got daily updates on someone's life and two posts every other day for 535 days in a row, you'd think you know all there is to know about this person, right? So who are these people who keep following these accounts? Who keep up with everything? <laughs> Originally, your Finsta was reserved for only your closest friends. But that term has become very loose. For example, a girl I had known from middle school requested to follow me a few months ago. I was a little surprised. After all, we had had only 10, 15 conversations in the past five years. But call it courtesy or maybe curiosity, I accepted her request. And she accepted mine in return. I am not one of her over 1,500 Instagram followers, but I am one of her 191 so-called closest friends. I can tell you who went to her birthday party or which beach is her favorite. I can tell you which night she parties and which night she breaks down. I cannot, however, tell you the last time we talked in person. Now, personally, I have about 90 followers, and of those 90, I get an average of 14 likes per photo, a minimal response. That's a 15% response rate. That's practically nothing. That's shouting into a dark void and wondering if anyone, anything will hear you. That's whispering to yourself at a party and looking around to see if any heads turn. That's curling up in your bed night after night, scrolling and refreshing through your account, looking for any kind of a reaction to what you post. Don't you see what we are doing to ourselves? Does one person's like, one person's comment, really warrant the five, 10, 15 posts people will publish just in one day or one week? Evidently, the answer for most people is yes. Despite a small response rate, Finsters are considered a safe place to share your problems. If someone scrolls past your photo, they are not rejecting you because there is no dislike option. Even with a limited response, you can still tell yourself that everyone cares. More importantly, you can broadcast your flaws and imperfections online, and it doesn't affect how people talk to you face to face. 
No one questions your late night thoughts or obsession with the office, as long as you don't spoil it for everyone else. We've all ranted about our problems online. No one wants to talk to them about them, so they won't be brought up in front of you either. Instagrams represent a fundamental aspect of high school, conformity. It's easier to admit your flaws when everyone else is doing the same. Isn't failing a test so much justified if no one else did well either? Every post on your Finsta is supposed to be relatable, telling people their problems are not theirs alone. Your pictures and captions about late night coffee or controlling parents remind people that they are not alone. You are not alone. So honesty shines bright on nearly every dark corner as long as it's protected by a screen. Finstagram shield people from a harsher reality where they're held to the expectation of perfection. So you open the app, you put on your mask, and you tell your truth. 